Hey guys, welcome to the sixth part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework for Python. In this one we're going to be talking about the Ginger 2 templating. So this Ginger 2 thing allows us to pass data from the Django project itself through to our HTML templates so that we can present that data that we've, for example, taken out of the database or got from somewhere else and then present that to our user using one of the HTML templates that we've made. So in the views you're going to see quite a lot that you, you're going to need to pass data from the views to your template. So the views is where you're going to have all your logic so if you need to communicate with the database you're going to write your Django database queries right here. So that's where the logic is going to go for your Django project, at least in the most part. So I'm just going to define a uh, list, let's say numbers, uh, is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is some data that I'm going to pass through. And I'm also going to say, I don't know, my name for example is a string, let's say Max Goodridge. So there's a couple of data variables and let's say we, we might have pulled some of this data out of a database or wherever it's come from. We've now got this data uh, so for this example I've just hard coded it but the way that we pass it through to the template is through this render method so the render method parameters we've got request and then we've got the location of the template itself but what render also takes is an optional one which is going to be a dictionary object so in that dictionary object it's going to contain all of the data that we want to pass through to the view so I'm just going to say uh, args for arguments and I'm going to define that as a variable. So this is going to be a dictionary object. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say the name, so this is the first one we're going to be passing through, is the name. So the key name, which is just a random key that I've chosen, it doesn't have to be called name, it could be called key or it could be called uh, my name or it could be called anything but what the string here is is it's going to be how you refer to the data in the template itself and then the name is the name of the variable that we've defined here so just to make it really obvious that it's a different one I'm, I'm going to say my name so this is going to be how we're going to refer to it in this HTML template so if we go over, that's all you need to do in the view now, so if we go over to the HTML template and I'm just going to create another h1 here and make sure we can see that in the website, so I'm going to say uh, some, some text there. So this is the text that we're going to be changing and what I'm going to do now is instead of saying, instead of hard coding this text inside this h1 HTML tag, I'm going to say I'm going to use two sets of curly brackets and I'm going to say my name just like that and what that's going to do is it's going to take that value from the view that we've passed through and then present that in the HTML template so we've got the name which is defined here and then we store that in a dictionary and the key in that dictionary where the value is this name the key is going to be how we refer to that in the view and then we pass that to the render method so that's a simple example of how you can pass that sort of data through to the HTML but what if you wanted to pass something that is iterable so we've defined a list here as well so we've got some numbers one, one through five and I also want to pass this through to the view but I don't want to just pass that plane just as a list and then it'll present a list in the website. I want to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so that I'm iterating through each time. So I'm going to show you how you do that as well. And that's also using the Ginger templating in the HTML file which I'll show you. So I'm just going to say numbers and then numbers again. So that's going to pass it through to the view and this dictionary can be as long as you need it to be so that you can pass all the data that you need and in the HTML file I'm going to say 
So we've got H1. Well, I'm going to say UL, which is sort of like a, a list in HTML. And then I'm going to write a little for loop. So to do a for loop in the Ginger logic, you have to do the curly brackets and then the percents, sort of like this. And then I'm going to say for each in and then whatever I called that data structure, so I can't remember, I just I just call it numbers. So for, I'm going to say for number in numbers, just to make it a bit more readable. So this is just a, a variable that's defined within the for loop, just like a for loop in Python. And then I'm going to say, this is a list object, and then I'm going to say number. In fact, we need to use number like this. So I'm going to say number just like that and then also what I need to do is I need to say I need to end the for loop because unlike Python HTML isn't based on white space so that has its pros and cons because it means that you don't necessarily need to indent your code but you also it doesn't know when the for loop ends so you're gonna have to say end for like that otherwise it just won't know so if we refresh we should see the it's taken that data structure and it's iterated through just like a for loop in Python and then it's presented each one as an li object on the page and you can see that if we inspect element so you can see that it's created all those list objects based on the data from that list so in the next few videos we're going to try to evolve this application so that it sort of resembles our end goal of making a fully functioning login and registration system slightly more closely